Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at a product which, uh, which I saw on Tom's, I think it's uh, DIY3D review or something like that. Uh, Tom does a great job in reviewing stuff, and, and he did some stuff on bed adhesion. And one of the things I noticed is this uh, 3D EZ, which was one of the the products that he uh, used. And I decided to go ahead and order some and give it a shot on the Da Vinci's because one of the things I've been using glue stick for a long time on the Da Vinci's and it works, but you know it's really not the best, and it really seems a little bit crude. Um, the other piece is I really don't like ABS slurry, so I you know my maker space is in. Uh, the basement of, uh, of my home and while I have installed ventilation in this room um, you know because of the smell of plastics and dust and everything else and the laser cutter it, you know I just still don't like um, the fact of the smell of of acetone so I, I kind of really like this idea of, of this product now one of the pieces is I kind of go through and talk about it I, I, I want I'm going to kind of do twofold in this review the the first piece is um, Anthony seems to be Anthony the CEO um, it seems to be a smaller company which kudos to you Anthony you know entra the entrepreneurial uh, spirit is alive and well here in uh, America and Minnesota it looks like so um, big hats off to you but the second thing is I, I think this is a good um, a, you know opportunity to take a look at somebody who is starting a small business and it's clear that they're starting off small you know because the uh, bottle came packaged in a sandwich bag and even though on the um, internet it showed a custom brush I got a typical and again in a sandwich bag um, a, you know foam painters brush now I'm not complaining <coughs> excuse me just getting over pneumonia I, I'm not complaining however I think it's a good um, I I example of of somebody starting a business and again I've started numerous businesses in my life and um, you know it's been some interesting endeavors and, and I, I kind of want to share and use use some of this as a platform for sharing how to how to improve it because again as I sort of rattled in a couple prior videos one of the big things that I want to do with these videos is is, is is a little bit of the commercialization of the hobby so anyways and kind of enough rambling about that but one of the things again I want to I want to first take a look at is is what comes in the package so I ordered the sampler kit which gives you this which was like 10 bucks and I believe that included shipping and you got this this bottle a smaller bottle I'm not sure how many ounces is on here how many ounces this is I think it said on the site but I don't see it on here it'd be nice to have have it on the bottle uh, then it comes with a foam paint brush uh, one of Anthony's cards thank you Anthony uh, it also comes with a two alcohol pads and um, some simple instructions. Looks like printed out and kind of cut out with scissors. So, first thing I want to do is talk a little bit about what's what came in the packaging and how Anthony could probably improve it and also save some money because um, and I'm not joking. Sandwich bags are not cheap. So this is a snack bag, and it's good that that obviously. You know, he's packaged it this way because, again, in shipping, this top could come off. And, you know, I'm going to remove it from the, the thing and kind of show you. So that the top could come off in shipping. And because I'm assuming that there's no seal on the inside of here, that this is just a bottle. Yep. That, you know, he's purchased in bulk probably off Alibaba or something like that. So kudos. But. One of the big tricks to if you're if you're going to do something like this, um, go on to eBay, buy a shrink wrap machine, and shrink wrap plastic. Super super cheap, under a hundred bucks. Um, you know, I, I've run several small businesses as well as a number of large businesses, but several small what I would call hobby businesses, and having a shrink wrap machine is indispensable. So, uh, you know, you buy the big rolls. You know, you simply lay down the shrink wrap machine, and maybe I'll do a video on it sometime, and, and, and shrink wrap this stuff. And it's far cheaper than a sandwich bag. 
and it looks far more professional and again you could put all this in in one shrink wrap thing and, and have it all done so shrink wrap big big uh, advantage in in the retail space um, a little bit on the coloring this seems to be a bit different color I thought the material on the website was red and the sticker was was red um, maybe he had to change it or something like that I, I, I don't know I like the red color a little bit better the sticker is a little bit hard to read um, you know not that it may affect the product or not I, I'm just from again sharing from a, a standpoint is um, you know some of my recommendations to Anthony about things to change it to make it more attractive for potential sale and then also you the viewers if you're interested in, in starting a small business based upon you know 3d printing CNC machining etc you know some of the, some of the things to take into account so because the color is also hard to see on the card it's hard for me and especially with my 50 plus year old eyes really to read that even with my reading glasses you know you want a good balance of contrasting numbers now there's a number of, of Panatone charts out there or color combination charts out there that you can download off the internet if you're going to start a business go get one of those color charts pick your colors and your complementary colors off that chart I cannot stress that enough a lot of people have already done a lot of work for you for free so don't intend to be your um, own color pickers the other piece is, is uh, he has a domain name off sleepyyetel.net, uh, but yet he has a domain 3d-easy.com. Hey, get, get a mail account based upon that. So, you know, a, 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 a Gaston at whatever. Don't 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 use you know uh, email like that. It's hard to remember. It confuses people because people look at it and go, oh, I want to, you know, contact this, but yet it's that, you know, the, the simpler you make it for people, the better off it is. So, anyways, I'm not picking on Anthony. Hey, I give Anthony kudos for, for going out on the line. Um, however, again, I think these are just some simple things that are worth mentioning from a business aspect uh, that could help Anthony as well as help you if you're interested in doing something like this because again I, I've done a number of businesses over the years and um, you know hey I've lived through a lot of this stuff so just kind of sharing the other piece is the instructions nice that nice that it came with some instructions uh, again if you're going to do it I know you want to get it, get away as cheap as possible however first impressions are the most important and especially in making margin now for ten bucks I tell you, I think shipped. I can't see how Anthony made a lot of money here because by the time I figure up a, a few dollars for everything here, Anthony's time, you know, ten dollars is a pretty cheap price for for this product. And again, it, it's a little bit of an intro type thing because again, he's selling, I think, bigger like buckets of this stuff. But I, I'm really interested, number one, to see how far this goes because on his website. Some folks claim they're, they've gotten like 100 prints out of one maintained application of this stuff. So, um, you know, theoretically, this bottle should last for a long, long time, and it was 10 bucks. So uh, we'll see. So in short, what this says, so it, just for clarity, I've already cleaned the bed here. Um, so for clarity, it says uh, applying 3D Easy is, is pretty straightforward. Uh, use the included alcohol swab to make sure your bill plate is clean. Now, I give Anthony a lot of credit for this section right here. So, one of the things when I do when I do um, on on the Da Vinci's, uh, I clean the bed with alcohol after I, I use water to take up the glue. It's water soluble glue. I typically use either the staples or if I really need a lot of extra adhesion, I go with the Elmer's purple glue. So both water soluble. So I have a bottle, actually a little spray bottle I keep next to the printer and some paper towels to clean up. But after the water dries, what I do is I use alcohol pads, just like Anthony sent me, uh, to clean off the bed. Now I don't do this, this every time, but if I want to do a really good cleaning, I do that because what happens is even though you clean this off with water, there's still a bit of a film. If I run my fingers across here, there's still a little bit of a film on here. And the alcohol is going to take that film off and give you just general better adhesion. So, you know, there's one tip on its own. Even if you're not using this stuff, when you go to put a nice foundation down, 
use alcohol to clean it off, and you don't have to use the pads. Um, I, I typically use, or I, well, I do have some of the pads. Um, I typically use just a bottle of alcohol and um, uh, some paper towels to clean it off because um, it's cheaper. So again, I've taken the pad out. I'm just going to kind of clean clean the bed off here, making sure to kind of especially get it. So I've gone I've gone this way forwards and backwards as well as crossways to make sure I've gotten the entire surface clean, and uh, you know flip it over. Do it once again. There's two sides to the pad. Um, and this also along the sides. I would do the sides kind of last to kind of clean it up because the sides always on the Da Vinci seem to attract a lot of crud. So, all right. <clears throat> that piece is done. So, now what the instructions, let's go back to the instructions. Also, sorry for the sump pump. It's uh, springtime here in Michigan or headed that way. So, uh have a little bit of that running so using the enclosed foam brush um, apply a thin coat of 3d easy lengthwise onto your build plate so all right let's do that so we're going to remove the brush from the sandwich bag brush removed I'm going to keep the sandwich bag uh, because I'm going to put the brush back in it between coats and then I'm going to wash the brush out after I'm done. So, um, so we're going to take this and uh, put a little bit. I'm really not sure. Let's start with that much, and we'll see how it goes as we paint it on. So it's a nice, nice, pretty blue, and um, might take a little bit more than I think. So that. Of course, the brush is going to absorb a little bit, so let's let's put a little bit more on this time and see. Um, because one of the things I'm hoping with this is that, uh, you know, from what I read on Anthony's website, is if you maintain this, i.e., you know, between prints, just sort of touch up where it's lifted from the bed, this can last for quite quite a while. Um, you know, so so one person has claimed, I think yeah, from the website, about a hundred prints. Now, one of the things that as I'm doing this, it's probably about 74 degrees in my basement right now, and um, lower humidity, and this stuff seems to be drying pretty rapidly, or at least tacking up pretty rapidly. One of the things the instructions mentions is uh, potentially uh, putting a fan, blowing a fan across it to dry it faster. I'm not sure if that's, at least in my application and temperature, necessary. Now, one of the other things that... Uh, So one of the things I want to make sure is, as I've gotten on a little bit of these pads, and Da Vinci uses those to touch off, so I kind of want to be a little bit careful. And so, okay, I'm going to call that a first coat. Now, it, it uh, indicates that we should put three coats on. So I'm going to put this back in the bag, leave it set for a minute, and let this, because you're supposed to let this dry between um, settings, so I'll leave it a few minutes to dry. Let me close the bottle here. The other piece, well, well in this first one, be, be, before I pause for a minute, um, what the other thing that would be nice is is when, when you produce a product like this that that is potentially a consumable, in other words, can be accidentally uh, consumed by pets or eaten by kids or something like that. It, it's typically a good idea to make an MSDS or material safety data sheet available for the product to know what you're dealing with. Also, um, because we're heating this up on a heated bed, it's going to produce fumes. Uh, now, I read something on 
the 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 I think website, and I'm not 100 percent sure that I'm remembering this correctly, but it it, it read to the tune of um, this is kind of like a natural product or what have you, but still yet I would have really liked to see an MSDS sheet um, provided with this product or an MSDS sheet available online. Now it might be on his website, and I just couldn't find it. It didn't jump out at me. Uh, However, if you're going to do something like this, I highly recommend keeping in mind, um, and I don't know, I've never created an MSDS sheet myself. I've used MSDS sheets extensively, and especially if you're going to use this in a commercial setting, you're going to need to have an MSDS sheet available for your employees to look at to see what potential hazards that might be. So. Again, a little bit of commentary to, to Anthony. If you don't have an MSDS sheet, you probably should get one. So this is drying up real nice. Um, it's still kind of tacky. So uh, I'm going to take a little break here, let this set up, and then we'll come back and we'll apply the next coat. Okay, welcome back. So it's been about um, 10, 20 minutes since we've... Uh, applied this in, in very interesting you might might have seen it before and so it was um, kind of smearing everything but it's dried very much to the t you know to the touch um, and, and fairly clear I mean the the glass is a little bit hazy um, but you know uh, interesting feel it's a very silky feel so <laughs> that's kind of interesting also, one of the things I did while between the break of what I think is right, I washed out the brush again, and, I, and I've dried it out. So it seems to clean up okay. So not a big issue there with it, it cleaning up. So that's actually pretty good. So now it says we need to put on the second coat uh, in, the, in the opposite direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down a couple lines here sort of like ketchup or mustard and let's see how that works the viscosity of this is, is fairly like a thick hand cream so if that's of interest or importance to you um, so I can kind of see how um, I, I, I think what am what am I trying to say here I, I think this could take quite a bit to create the the bed liner more more than I think I anticipated um, which I don't know if it's a good or bad thing uh, you know because it's not that much more I've still uh, you know so far going on my second coat here still haven't used too much of the bottle I am kind of curious to see how much at the end of the day and, and I'm trying to to really you know since I'm doing a review on this get it um, all the way to the edges. Now, uh, you know, again, because one of the things that the Da Vinci does is it does that weird, and I should say it's weird, but that test print off to the side or runs that brim on the side. So one of the things that I want to do is, is I want to get this uh, very much to the sides. And I forgot to clip on the mic, so I think you probably heard me um, before. So everybody's complaining about my audio. I shouldn't say everybody, but some people are complaining about my audio. So I'm trying a little bit different setup here. Um, so I'm not used to clipping on a mic, so kind of sorry if the audio wasn't the best early on. But my voice pretty much carries. So anyways, um, so I'm trying to get to speak because, you know, if you wanted to cheat, you cheat and, you know, you're just doing something in the center, you could probably just get away with doing more of the center, but I want to make sure I do this right, because one of the things I want to do, as I mentioned in the first segment, is I want, my, my, my goal is to keep this maintained, and I'd like to get 100 prints out of it too. And, and so just kind of update the, um, the bed a little bit. So there we go. Uh, we've put on the what I'd call the second coat. So, you know, the first time we went this way, second time we went this way, then third time we'll come back this way again, and that'll be the third coat. And then once we do that, we'll go ahead and, and print something and see how it comes out. Um, so, anyways, I'm going to let this dry, sit for another 15, 20 minutes, and, and let it dry, and then we'll come back, put the final coat on. We'll let that coat dry, and then 
hey, we'll print something, okay? See you in a couple minutes. Uh, grab a cup of coffee. Okay, so we're here back. It's been about another 15, 20 minutes, and uh, everything's dried. Actually, it's, it's been a little bit more than 20 minutes. And, and again, one of the things that we see is the... the um, the, the kind of like, you know, if you wax your car, how you know when it's dry, it's, this basically looks the same way as, as it dries to a solid haze. And again, very silky smooth finish. Now, one of the things that I did want to do is I've put this, kept this in the um, the uh, printer, you know, and it's a Da Vinci, so it's enclosed. So I kind of wanted to show the temperature and humidity. So at 70 degrees and 32% humidity, um, it takes about 20 minutes for this to dry so you know there's about 20 minutes for the first coat 20 minutes for the second coat so you know I think we're gonna be to put three coats on here you're probably going to be at around an hour to put three coats on which again if, if it if it lasts in you know you can just maintain it I, I don't think that's a big thing um, you know, but it's not wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, like it is with the glue stick where you just take glue stick and rub it on and then, you know, you're printing. Um, this is taking a little bit to apply. But again, I'm hoping that the results, especially adhesion and warping, because one of my big complaints with the Da Vinci, even with the heated bed, is the warping. I do get uh, a lot of warping. <clears throat> More so than I would expect to get. Now, I haven't really done ABS on any other printer. Um, I've tried it on the Wanhao. However, that's really not a fair comparison because one of the things, I would not do ABS on an open frame printer. Um, you know, you have to have this closed up and everything even just to make it reasonable to do ABS. Any type of larger ABS parts without warping. Otherwise, you know, they just simply warp. So now what I've done is I'm now going back this way and it's uh, the surface is actually tacking up. Now one of the things I think you can kind of see if I get my fat hands out of the way is, is the way I'm kind of moving this around and, and dabbing this in because the uh, this stuff really, especially as I'm, I'm now on third coat, really wants to drag. Um, you know, so, you know, I don't know, maybe I should just glob a whole bunch on here, but I don't think that's probably the right answer. Um, and the other thing I'm kind of hoping that I achieve uh, with this is to get a little bit more unified um, coating on here. Because one of the things I, I don't like about the glue is when I apply the glue, and maybe, maybe it's just me and applying the glue and everybody else is doing it better and I'm just sloppy, is the thickness of the glue is far from uniform. And I get on the first layers, you know, it all sticks and everything, but some of it squishes out more than other areas uh, do. And, and, and so I'm hoping that this is kind of maybe a little bit self-leveling, if you know what I mean. It, you know, because of the way it's going down. And so, um, again, just rambling, I put it down. And, and what I'm doing is, you see, this is now, this is being the third coat, tacking up very, very fast as I put this down. Um, since I'm doing a review, I'm going to be pretty liberal uh, with this. So I'm going to put some more on. Uh, it's hard to tell, but I've, it feels like I've used to right about there on the, I get this in the frame, right about there, I think, on it. Um, after I do this, I'll kind of open it up and take a look. But one of the things I'm doing is just kind of dabbing this around into spots where uh, it really didn't go well the first time. And then coming back and doing, as they said, you know, uh, back and forth to kind of even it out. Um... So, in one of the things I am trying to stress the center a little bit more than the edges. Uh, I think that's actually pretty good. And uh, it's 
So I have to tell you, at this, this juncture, as I pull the brush, I wish you could feel the, the, I could transfer the tension on the brush. The brush really wants to stick. So, well, <clears throat> that looks like the third, third layer. So there's what the brush looks like. So I've, I've cleaned and dried the brush between applications. Uh, and one of the things before I do print, I am going to take some paper towel and a little bit of alcohol and clean these metal pads off. I've gotten a little bit on there. shouldn't be an issue. Um, however, especially that back one is where the, the Da Vinci touches off of. And so I want to make sure that's clear so i got a good, good contact. And so we'll let this set another, say, 20 minutes. And then um, we'll come back. We'll take a look at what it looks like. Um, interesting that this has gone up two degrees since I've applied the um, the material and this is closed the temperature hasn't changed I don't know maybe this material is exothermic um, because that did start out at 70 70 I don't know maybe it was me holding it so we'll have to see that's interesting that that changed um, anyways all right I'm gonna go grab yet another cup of coffee so this is a three coffee project easy so um, then we'll come back I'll show you it dried and then we'll start to print something and we'll see how it works so I wanted to try something it's not dry yet but what this the temperature change here was kind of interesting so I went and got my infrared thermometer and so one of the things so I want to take I'm going to just take a measurement off the steel bed over here uh, of the printer and in short I've got 68.4 degrees Fahrenheit now I'm going to take a take a reading off the bed itself with the with the uh, 3d EZ on it and actually the bed is quite a bit cooler I found that very, very interesting than than the uh, the bottom of the case so at, at it uh, basically 65.2 degrees so it's about three degrees three degrees cooler actually so um, I, I think it has to do with the evaporation it doesn't smell like there's any alcohol or anything in this but there's something that is a probably evaporating and wicking the heat away and that's why the heat loss um, so I don't know why the change of the two degrees temperature in here. It might be because the printer's on and the LEDs and the electronics are probably warmer in the case. So that's that's the only thing I can figure. So this stuff is not exothermic. Um, if anything, it's it's the inverse, and it's as it dries, it actually cools. Um, so again, I'm making the assumption. So if those of you don't send me hate mail. Um, that this is also contracting a bit since it is cooling and it's not exothermic and expanding. So just kind of wanted to share that little um, bit with you as, as this dries. So I'm going to go back to my coffee and I'll see you when it dries. Okay, welcome back. It's been about another 20 or so minutes and uh, everything is set up nicely here on the bed. So uh, it's kind of is a little splotchy or whatever, but it seems to be smooth and uniform. So, uh, anyways, we we got. I'm gonna have to guess. I've given it pretty close to an hour uh, to you know do this process, and it's probably, uh, in, in all frankness, been about mm, maybe two hours in between because I've gone off and done stuff while you know I've been waiting for it to dry, etc., like that. So. Um, you know that's sort of been the case here so just kind of give you an idea but I think if you're gonna go through and apply this allot yourself about an hour of time uh, to put on all three coats and you know so put on a coat let it set 20 minutes put on a coat 20 minutes let us put another coat set for 20 minutes and I think you'd be good um, just out of blind curiosity too um, let's uh, I just kinda of wanna take a measurement if I get my finger out of the way of the thing so I'm at roughly, so that's pretty interesting. So I'm at 72 internal, and then I'm just kind of curious if I read the bed temperature. So the bed temperature has come back up uh, from the way it was. So as I showed that other little piece. So that's, that's kind of interesting. So um, 
that is still a little bit cooler than, than the case itself. Um, because I'm interested in the thermal properties, too, of, of, of this material, because obviously it's going to have to transfer the heat and everything for uh, the material. So what we're going to do is uh, go ahead right now. I'm going to send a, a print to the printer, and I'm going to see if I can do a time lapse. No big promises. The Da Vinci's are kind of hard to do because of the closed case. So um, let's go check it out, and we'll see what happens once the print's finished. Welcome back. So we've uh, finished the print here. So uh, just a couple things as I wanted to, I left this in here. So the interior case temperature rose to about 82 degrees Fahrenheit and the humidity dropped by about, um, I think 10%. I think that was around 32 before. So a little bit interesting about um, some of the internal temperature. So looks like we got good bed adhesion now I you know I let this thing cool down do its whole normal route normally I think like we all do is cheat and kind of pull it off early but I wanted to follow all the rules in doing this um, uh, evaluation now I gotta say this this is uh, this piece of is stuck on here usually with the glue it just pops right off so that took a little bit of effort to get off now the uh, this is stuck down very nice, uh, I have to admit. Now, I, I kind of printed a piece, you know, I didn't want to get too crazy and, and print a crazy piece and see how bad I could make it uh, uh, warp. Um, however, I did print something with a fair amount of surface area. Now, one of the things, if I printed this with glue, I would get typically a little bit of lifting on the edges. And the one thing I can tell you is it's held down on all four edges. I cannot get my fingernail under any of the four edges. So I'm impressed from that standpoint alone. Um, because even, even properly applied glue, I would uh, have a problem. The other piece, looking at this, and once I pull it off, it, it looks like, remember I was talking before about the layers of glue pushing up that bottom layer looks pretty nice so let's see I've got my favorite Wano knife uh, pops off fairly easy once cooled down and um, wow I would say uh, very little you know surface distortion or residue very nice very clean bottom um, and again this is ABS for I mean, practical purposes in, in cheap Da Vinci filament, um, that came out pretty good. I, I got to say, all in all, I'm in, impressed. I want to see if I can get this up. Very little. There's a little bit of push out on the first layer, which is typical, but it's, uh, it, it's better than glue. Uh, I got to say that. Uh, a lot better than glue. Because usually I've got to take that, the you know, and I still have to do it, take that plastic finishing tool and run it around the outside. However, I probably only have to do one race around the outside here, where normally I have to do a couple. Um, wow. I, I'm impressed. i, I got to say, I'm impressed. So, uh, also, uh, no, no residue to speak of on the bottom side of this. I mean, this is good to go. A lot of times with the glue, I'll have to wash the bottom. Sometimes I'll even have to use uh, uh, alcohol to, to get the residue off. But um, here, no, this is this is golden. Um, I'm uh, I'm impressed because, like I say again, this isn't a horrible piece. But and there is a little, you know, actually, it's there. There is a little bit of. I don't want to call it lifting, but but warping since I took it off the bed and it's cooled a little bit. But all four corners were firmly held on that bed, and it came off nice without a lot of torque. The bed still feels real nice. I don't know if I if I should redo this area. I think I'm going to try printing a couple more pieces over time and, and see how it comes out, and then see how long it sort of lasts on the bed. But... Uh, I got to tell you, and I'll put the link below, but, you know, Anthony it seems to work pretty good. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with, uh, with it, at least so far, in the economics. So since I've let the bottle settle, I think you can see how much I used So to coat the bed three times. So in this $10 bottle, 
which, Anthony, I think you might be selling it a little bit too cheap. Um, wow, I, you know, idealistically I could measure it out, but there's probably 10 to 15 applications in this bottle. And if you maintain this, this $10 bottle is going to last you probably more than, than $10 worth of glue sticks. So, um, I don't know. I'm happy. I'm very happy with this. So, uh, um, I'm supportive of Anthony, and he's not paying me to say this. So, no relationship, no even affiliate fees or anything for this. This is just a straight-up evaluation. So, anyways... If you have a DaVinci or any other uh, ABS type printer where you're utilizing this, I'd say go ahead and get it. Um, <clears throat> maybe I'll try it, uh, you know, with uh, on the Wanhao, but I want to try the P P E P E I. I'll spit it out on the Wanhao. So uh, you know, and obviously that won't work on the DaVinci's. But I was looking for something for the DaVinci's, and so far I found. Whoops, get it over in the thing. So so far I found it. So hey, if this video helped, yep. Out, give it a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs up for Anthony in, in 3D Easy. So, uh, uh, found it very interesting. Also, subscribe. A lot more of this coming. See you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.